Hmm? We don't have it. Tayyip, we will have them to send it to you because the introduction of the book uh, mentioned the uh, the book that we're going to study of Al Imam Al Suyuti as one of the uh, uh, known book into the Islamic library, uh, Al Nudmul Habir. Uh, just So let's go through the uh, introduction, and then uh, I will ask your brother Ibrahim to send you the uh, nudum. So it will go to, we would like to study them in parallel, insha'Allah ta'ala. Uh, I will read part of the nudum for you just to... Al-Nudum uh, al-Habiru fi ulum al-Qur'ani wa usul al-Tafsir. The Sheikh Saud ibn Ibrahim al Shuray. Um, Yaqulu, I will read and then you will have the copy. But what we're going to study today is part of this. Al Khaliqul Muhaymin al Adimi, Alhamdulillahi, Lil Musawwar al Karimi, Alhamdulillahi, Alhamdulil Musawwar al Karimi, Al Khaliqil Muhaymin al Adim. ثم الصلاة والسلام سرمدا على النبي أحمد وآله وصحبه والتابع وقارئ وكاتب وسامع ومن على طريقهم يسير نعم الطريق إثره المسير وخذ علوما للفتى مهمة وكن حريصا ساعيا بهمة علم القرآن أشرف العلوم فهاك حد Jumlatil Mausumi. In this nudum, as we starting every nudum and every book by celebrating and praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, the one, the fashioner, the Al Kareem, uh, the, the generous subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the holy, the creator, Al Muhaiminu Al Adimu subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qala, and then the peace and the blessing and the prayer is uh, upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the everlasting prayer and blessing uh, and peace on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ala Nabi Ahmada, ala Nabi Ahmada, Ahmad is the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, wa alihi wa sahbihi, and also this uh, peace and blessing is extended to his family, to his companion, the, to the tabi'een, the followers of the companion. وَقَارِئٍ وَكَاتِبٍ وَسَامِعٍ and extended to the reciter, to the writer, and to the listener, all of them. Anything connected to the way of the sharia, listening to the words of Allah and studying the words of Allah, peace and blessing be upon him. وَمَنْ عَلَىٰ طَرِيقِهِمْ يَسِيرُ And also extended on everyone that he's uh, walking and traveling and behaving and conducting and striving and following their path. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, those foremost from the muhajireen al-ansar and those who follow them in the way of the ihsan. 
all of them till the day of judgment وخذ علوم للفتى مهمة الفتى هي the student of knowledge the young person or any student of knowledge seeking to learn wisdom seeking to learn the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take the right knowledge that is going to help you and uh, open you know your eyes illuminate your heart and build uh, and clean your insight قال وكن حريصا ساعيا بهم one of the condition of uh, succeeding in this knowledge is to be like devoted to be focused to be patient uh, for the learning قال وكن حريصا ساعيا بهم and ساعيا acting uh, seeking knowledge acquiring الهمة is the high concern to have that objective this objective which build this motivation and the motivation will be driving you and what greater motivation than to seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala علم القرآن أشرف العلوم علم القرآن أشرف العلوم the knowledge of the Quran the science of the Quran is the most honorable of the knowledge uh, the question that someone should ask, how do we know the best of the knowledge? And how can we define, uh, you know, the most honorable of the knowledge? The scholars are telling us that the honor and the greatness of the knowledge depends on its content and its subject. The greatest or the greater is the topic or the one that is uh, the subject of the content, the greater is the knowledge. If the knowledge concerning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's ilm tawheed that's for the greatest of all is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the greatest of the knowledge is the knowledge related to know Allah. Then the words of Allah is the Quran then the knowledge associated to the words of Allah is Ashraf al -ulu. So the knowledge is known by its content and its, you know, let's say, uh, its topic, its subject. If its subject is holy and great, so the knowledge is great and holy and honorable. So when we say Ashraf al -ulumi, ulum al qurani the greatest and the most honorable of the knowledge, are the sciences of the Quran. Why? Because the topic of the Quran deals with the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so on. Then you come to the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, and then it comes to the fiqh and then it comes to the usul and so on till you get to the uloom of the dunya. The uloom of the dunya, they help you in this life but uh, they will not be, you know, accountable on that in the day of judgment. And that's how actually we define the typology of knowledge and its importance uh, and the structure of the importance of the knowledge based on its impact, uh, that the impact that it has in your life and its relation with your purpose of life and its relation to the purpose of life. So Ashraf uh, al-Ulumi, Ilm al-Qur'ani or Ulum al-Qur'an, why? Because the topic and the subject of Ulum al-Qur'an is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وتبحث النزول والمسائل وهي عبارة تفيد السائل وكيف ذا الأداء باللسان وهكذا الأحوال في القرآن. I will stop and this, you know, and uh, he going to talk about, uh, you know, when you get the book, I will come back to he quoting one of the uh, statement of Ibn al-Arabi al-Maliki about the numbers of Ulum al-Qur'an. And he's saying, قَالَ وَأَوَّلُ الْعُهُودِ فِي الظُّهُورِ بِسَفْرِهِ الْمَعْرُوفِ أَوَّلُ الْعُهُودِ بِالظُّهُورِ بِرَابِعِ الْقُرُونِ وَالْعُصُورِ The first time when we have, you know, the registration and recording of the science of the Qur'an, it was in the fourth century, بِرَابِعِ الْقُرُونِ وَالْعُصُورِ 
والمرزبان سابقا يداوي بسفره الحاوي بسفره المعروف باسم الحاوي then you have the first one who started to talk about that and he had a book about it called الحاوي is الامام المرزبان قال وبعده ابو الفرج والزركشي الزركشي هي the author of the book البرهان في علوم القران and uh, and then after الزركشي قال ثم السيوطي صار كالمرقش كالمرقش السيوطي he the one who comes to and with his book of الاتقان في علوم القران so that's why uh, we prefer that the book that uh, among the English translation that exists is to take the book of a Suyuti because one of the book in the Islamic library to be one of the, uh, let's say, the greatest reference into the uh, library of the Salaf uh, uh, to be in Ulum al-Quran. So that's a fact here. And inshallah, when we have the Nudum, uh, we'll study it be it farther. And when we come to any of the subject, then we either we go to the notes or to the books because every uh, verse is very concise. It requires uh, analysis and explanation. And therefore, when you have, uh, uh, you know, uh, between your hand a book that it will analyze it and, and explain it, will be a great, inshallah ta'ala. He started with the wahi and then... Uh, Tarif al-Qur'an, Nuzul al-Qur'an. I will go through uh, what we have here. First, the question, what is the Qur'an? What is the Qur'an? Just as a start for us. What is the Qur'an? Al-Qur'an huwa kalamu Allahi al-Mu'jiz. Al-Qur'an huwa kalamu Allahi al-Mu'jiz. The... The uh, the translation you have it in the page here, page I. Al Quran huwa kalam Allah al Mu'jiz. So Al Quran is the words of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the miraculous word of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, kalam Allah. And we say kalam Allah. So when you say Kalamullah, so uh, it's out of the fact to be the words of any of the creation. Because if saying Kalamullah is has the saying, for example, it is the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he understood from uh, the inspiration he got. That's kufr. Which actually uh, there's people today in the Muslim world who want to revive the uh, the thoughts of those uh, people who who claimed in the past um, the Quran that is created and saying the Quran created uh, deny the fact to say that the Quran is the words of Allah. The words of Allah sifa to that the words of Allah. Sifa to that. And we say Sifa to that is attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we say attributes of Allah, it means that the words of Allah has the whole aspect and element that the attributes of Allah have, that the attributes of Allah have, which is mean. Cannot be reproduced cannot be changed, does not perish, it does not, uh, you know, lead to crookedness, everlasting. Everything that applies to attributes of Allah attribute, uh, att uh, applies to the attributes of, of the words of Allah because the words of Allah are from Allah. If we dissociate the Qur'an from Allah's attribute to be a creation. Allah, this is what the Mu'tazah, they say, Allah created the Qur'an to give it to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as his message among these people. Therefore here, 
we had the Quran to be limited in time to treat a situation of one particular society, which is the society of the Prophet Sallallahu and that's it. The second aspect of saying the Quran is makhluq, which is actually, as I said, there's a very big campaign and movement for, you know, some branch of the secular uh, Muslim world and thinkers, they call them thinkers, is they adopt this, uh, this uh, option or this philosophy to have also the, the intellect be a judge on the Qur'an. Why? Because when you say the Qur'an being, are the words of the Prophet, he understood from the inspiration he got from uh, Allah. Therefore, the Qur'an is not anymore the words of Allah. If it's not the words of Allah, they say it's the word of Allah but created. If we say it's created, then we are making kind of a veil, kind of a gap between Allah's attribute and the Qur'an. If then it created, so human, they have, you know, the ability to rethink it, to judge it, to evaluate it, to make the interpretation with the tools of knowledge that they, you know, come up with, that they invent. And this is actually was one of the objective of the Mu'tazila as how come, you know, we've been forced to follow. Instead, man has the intellect to design for himself the path of life and the way how someone needs to govern, need to lead, etc., etc. So Al-Ma'mun, Al-Khalifa at the time, he was seduced by the idea why should he be, you know, following a teaching when he can make his own law? Which is, subhanAllah, uh, kind of having the, the intellect, the mind above the Qur'an. That's, you know, a very, let's say, concise summary of the meaning of the Qur'an created. We mentioned many times before, but it's always important to remind you with this fact because this is today is the tool that is being used in the Muslim world or among Muslims uh, to try to change the view toward the Quran, uh, claiming with the, which is actually falsehood, the way to liberate the Muslim generation and then to be uh, able to compete and race with the Western society. Unfortunately, so we learn and we uh, we acknowledge and we believe that the Quran is the words of Allah, Kalamullah, and that's the whole mihna of Al Imam Ahmad Ibn Hanbal, the mihna that he stood against, Rahimahullah, Waradiyallahu Anhu, and the whole scholar in the whole Muslim world. They respected him, and from that time he became Imam Ahl Sunnah, from among the Maliki and the Hanafi and the Shafi'i and the Hanbali, because SubhanAllah stood firm to save Islam from a full collapse. If the Quran was, you know, at that time, been accepted by the Ummah to be created, then uh, subhanAllah, we will not have the Qur'an today that we recite. قَالَ الْقُرْآنُ هُوَ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ الْمُعْجِزِ So it is uh, the miraculous word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. المُعْجِز, المُعْجِز, uh, you have it, I mean, first Allah, which means to think the words are solely from Allah. The book contains no words from anybody else, be it a human, a jinn, or angel. The Quran is the word of Allah and not the creation. You see it in the line. 
uh, in the third century, uh, Abbasid Khalifa al Ma'mun Abdullah ibn Harun al Rashid started the fitna that the Quran was a creation of Allah and not his speech. This deviation of aqidah, and there is a huge difference between the word of Allah and the creation of Allah. While the word of Allah is part of the self of Allah, I mean, this is part of his death. Hmm? The creation of Allah is distinct from Allah. While every created thing is doomed to disappear or be destroyed, the word of Allah is eternal and will not disappear. Even if the physical media that contain the word are destroyed, the word itself remains. Pretending that the Quran is a creation opens the doors to all evils. Any smart person could write a book of wisdom and present it as a creation from Allah and thus change the Quran. Likewise, one could argue that the creation of Allah was just for the time of the Prophet, so we must hold the firm aqidah that the Quran is the word of Allah. It's a summary of what I was sharing with you. Anyone who writes a book today, he can say, you know, it has the same level at the book of Allah. Why? Because the book of Allah is created and my words are created. But my words are more relevant because, you know, they talk about the society. I know this society. I live with the society. I know its challenges. I know its uh, uh, problems. And the Quran didn't talk about it. And actually, as I said, this is one of the campaign and movement and there's a big literature outside. If you just Open the door, you will see, subhanAllah, what people are talking about this. The second one we say, Al-Mu'jiz. Al-Mu'jiz. Kalamullahi Al-Mu'jiz. Isharatun ila anna hadha al-kalam a'jaz al-bashar wal-jinna an ya'tu bimithlih. This concept emphasizes, uh, you know, on the fact that the uh, characteristic of the Qur'an is supernatural. Al-I'jazu, which is mean, uh, Al-Mu'jiz, it has, you know, a uh, very clear aspect. Al-Mu'jiz first to be thought, you know, someone to be thought to be challenged, uh, chal uh, that can be challenged. And then it's impossible to challenge it or to produce like it. What is the meaning of the first uh, aspect I mentioned? That someone will invite you to challenge or in a challenge, for example, or competition on the race, that's something that you are capable to do, that it is into your capability to do. Example, in time of Musa, alayhi salam, uh, you know, when they've been invited, you know, to magic. So, the challenge wasn't something that the people of Fir'aun are unable to do. It's something actually they master. And then the Mu'jiza comes to show their weakness and their incapability, even though something they master, they cannot challenge the Mu'jiza from Allah. That's the definition of the Mu'jiza. So the miracle is something supernatural, but the supernatural by, might be something that men, they don't even, is impossible for them to do. For example, a, a miracle for someone to walk on the, on the sea. It's not possible for anyone to do it, right? So that's a miracle. It's not mu'jiza. The mu'jiza, one of its elements and aspect, that it can be challenged. It can be someone had the mastery over it. But when you challenge him, he cannot challenge you. The Arab, they were the most 
at the time of the Prophet وسلم, they reach the pinnacle of the mastery of the Arabic language. So are the master of the Arabic language. The Quran came in their own language. Something they master. So al-mu'jizah from a'jaza. A'jaza is like make you incapable to do it, even though you master it. And it's stronger than a miracle. Because the miracle say this one, he's a magician. Well, he brought something that nobody knows. But a thing that you know, that's why when they said the magic, the mushrikeen, it was something odd, awkward, and does not make sense. Because how can it be magic when he brought you something that you know, that you master? It's your language. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the beginning of the, the first ayah of the Quran after Surah al fatiha what is the first ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah? It is the first ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah. Huh? Alif, Lam, Mim. No, this is the first ayah. How can be the first ayah of the Quran disconnected letters who do not have meaning according to the people of the language? So, for example, say to someone, you say, um, Salam alaikum, say, Wa alaikum, salam, say, Alif, Lam, Mim. Say, I'm going to say, I'm sorry. Right? And you have to read Alif Lam Mim, Surah Al-Baqarah. So when the student, he was uh, reciting on the sheikh, he said, uh, Alif Lam Mim, Qala, Alam dhalika al-kitab wa la rayba fi. Qalu, no. Alif Lam Mim, dhalika al-kitab wa la rayba fi. So he learned it. So when he came to Surat Al-Fil, قال ألف لام ميم ترى كيف فعل ربك بأصحاب الفيل قالوا no this is ألم ترى كيف فعل So he told them teacher you confusing me he said no that's the way that Allah سبحانه وتعالى revealed it when ألم you read ألم when ألف لام ميم you read ألف لام ميم one of the explanation of the scholars in the ألف لام ميم is subhanallah, imagine people are skilled in poetry, eloquent in the language, strong in expression, great and fine mind in reasoning in their language. You come to them, say, Alif Lam Mim. Usually, if someone talks to you with the language, let's say gibberish, they're gonna mock you, but they could not. Why? Because when he said Alif Lam Mim, and what followed mesmerized them, which is make them to think this is greater than their mind, that they could not even, they have to submit to it. One. Second, the Quran is like Allah telling them, the Quran that is challenging you is composed by the letter that you know. There's no, there's 28 letters. The Quran used those 28 letters. There's no 30 letters used in the Quran. The 28 letters that the Arab, they use in their language, in their poetry, in their literature, in their uh, nathr and rifa and uh, qasa'id, everything. Those 28 letters. But that's the shocking this is the same letters. The same letter Allah made out of it, the Quran, that he challenged you to produce like it. And subhanAllah, when the whole Quran was compiled, the challenge came in the second page, not farther in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the second page, what did he say? قال فأتوا شهداءكم كل the first challenge قال وإن كنتم في ريب مما نزلنا على عبدنا 
فأتوا بسورة من مثلي صح فأتوا بسورة من مثلي and if you are in doubt of what we have send down our, our servant so bring forth one surah طيب الله challenge them with one surah are we going to say surah like al-Baqarah it's a long surah Ali Imran long surah so when you say surah is one unit one surah starting with Bismillah and ends and when it ends comes after a surah after it so if you take the surah like inna a'tainaka al-kawthar this is surah or not is it surah so which mean allah challenging them to bring surah like inna a'tainaka al-kawthar so this is the second page in the quran qala fa'tu bi suratin mithli min mithli something like it and then call all your witnesses. Call everyone you wish, other than Allah, if you are truthful. So if you cannot do it, and this is the biggest challenge, and you will never be able to do it. Open challenge to the Day of Judgment. You will never be able to do it. Imagine uh, people like Umayya wa Abu Jahl wa Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira reading this ayah. The Prophet ﷺ reciting on them this ayah. The people, the strongest people in the language, if they truly be able to do it, they will have, subhanAllah, said something like the Qur'an. Therefore, it's going to be impossible after the generation, that generation, to bring something of the Quran. So is that the people are the most eloquent in the Arabic language could not challenge the Prophet ﷺ when he was among them. And they hated his message, they fought his message, and they wished to exterminate him and every follower that he followed the Prophet ﷺ. So those are very... Uh, you know, uh, to note uh, the characteristic of the mu'jizah. So the mu'jizah is not literally miracle. The, because the miracle is supernatural, right? Something that you do not know. Someone flying in the air. So if someone, a prophet, comes and he say, he fly in the air, he say, I challenge you to fly. Everyone is going to say, you're making a trick for us. This is an illusion. But subhanAllah, look at all the mu'jizat that Allah sent as a proof with his prophets. All of them, all of them, the people that they sent to, they mastered that knowledge, they mastered that discipline. In time of Isa alayhi salam, uh, the discipline that they master is the medicine. So he used to treat cases that the knowledge that they have at that time it's impossible for them to do it so he challenged them in the field that they master as in the time of pharaoh as in the time of ibrahim السلام, their reasoning and their philosophy and the way of you know uh, analyzing he uh, السلام, he challenged them with that he challenged them with logic he said, this is my God. And then he, you know, disappeared. He said, I do not like those who disappear. He showed them by subhanAllah a sequence of reasoning that what they believing in is wrong. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, this is our proof we gave to Ibrahim to show to his people. Tilka hujjatuna atayna Ibrahim ala So the mu'jizah, it's not literally a miracle that people do, do not know. The mu'jizah is something that people, they master, but it comes to challenge them, to show them that the one who created them is greater than them, and he is merciful to them to show them that who gave them the knowledge, he has greater knowledge, and he inviting them to submit to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So 
This is when you say kalam Allah al mujiz So kalam, we know what the meaning of it. al mujiz is to say here uh, in the Qunna, uh, the miraculous and inimitable nature of the Qur'an. Huh? طيب قال إشارة إلى هذا الكلام أعجز البشر البشر والجن أن يأتوا بمثله and we're gonna talk a whole chapter about الإعجاز في القرآن الإعجاز في القرآن and uh, it is سبحان الله in the world of today people they only talk about the scientific facts as the miracle uh, part of the Quran that's not true actually and we don't want as a student of knowledge fall into uh, this kind of limitation and uh, uh, not quite understanding the meaning of the ajaz the ajaz of the quran is not in its science uh, scientific facts that been revealed in the quran or allah mentioned the quran the Quran is not a book of science. The Quran is a book of guidance, of mercy, of soul, of life. Therefore, every part of the Quran, every surah of the Quran is mu'jizah. That's why we're going to come, inshallah, to talk next week about the statement of Ibn al-Arabi that uh, in the Nudum al-Habir is being mentioned. قال hmm? The uh, third thing in knowing the Quran, defining, قال وحيه المنزل ووحيه المنزل. So it says, send down to the Prophet. قال the Quran, miraculous word of Allah. So that's the definition. We understand what is the words of Allah and how to believe that is the word of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and how it's dangerous and deviating, and it's really violation. Uh, in the core of the aqidah to say that the Qur'an is not the words of Allah. And what actually, uh, you know, kind of ill results will result from the, from the saying uh, or the statement that the Qur'an is the creation. Al-Mu'jiz, we understood, is not literally miracle, but is mu'jiz. And a'jaza in the Arabic makes someone Ajiz and Ajiz is the incapable to do and incapable, which is mean he had the power to do it, but he's been challenged, he cannot. And uh, the example to give you bring, for example, uh, someone like you know, big a mountain of muscle uh, to wrestle, and he say, you know, he's 300 pounds of muscle. And you bring uh, for him someone, a kid, like five years old. I told him this is a challenge. I told him this is not a challenge, this is a massacre. <laughs> right? So, to understand the ijaz, someone with 300 pounds, you bring someone close to him. And the people will say, oh, this person, he's going to crush this person. But not like from the beginning. But the power that the second person shows, that we say, this is his mu'jiz. Because this person he known and is killed, like the one that the Prophet ﷺ invited him to Islam, the Rukan. He's the one chief of the wrestler in Mecca. And challenged the Prophet ﷺ, everyone, Allah, the Prophet ﷺ called him with the, with the way of the aqidah, this person only has his mind like fight. So he wants to wrestle the Prophet. He wrestled him the first time, the second time, the third time. So that's mu'jiz. And it is for people skilled in those arts, is you know, they only know how difficult to be defeated by someone who's not known by having all these secrets and all these you know techniques. So that's the ajaz. Is people they think is, is are they rich but they cannot challenge it. That's the ajaz. And that is greater than a miracle that you do not have anything to do with it, that is out of your you know your imagination. 
looks like something totally supernatural. That the people, they will believe it because they see it, but they don't follow your way. It becomes like, you know, kind of, uh, you know, people to enjoy seeing it, but they don't believe it. The ajaz comes into the heart of their joy, of her, their happiness, in the heart of what they make them, give them pride and strength. And you show them something that they cannot challenge it. And they believe is at their reach. That's the ajaz. Inshallah. Like the Quran and the Arabic language among the mushriki. Okay. Now, continuing with the definition of the Quran, قال ووحيه المنزل على نبيه محمد ابن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. The words of Allah are infinite. وإن الله سبحانه وتعالى قال ولو أن ما في الأرض من شجرة أقلام والبحر يمده من بعد سبعة أبحر ما نفدت كلمة الله. If you just you know uh, have to have all the trees on the earth to be like pans and all the ocean and you put behind it after it seven ocean like it as ink and use all this ink with all these trees made out of them pans and they will all finish and still the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not finish from this infinite words of Allah, those words specifically revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. See, now you've gone into restriction. Words of Allah, nature of ajaz, no one can challenge it, reproduce it. And the one that is revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not to an angel, not to a jinn, not to spoken, not to uh, to any other prophet. In the one from the words of Allah revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's the meaning. وَوَحْيُهُ So this is قَالَ مُخْرِجٌ لِلْكَلَامِ الْإِلَهِ الَّذِي نَزَلَ عَلَى الْأَنْبِيَاءِ السَّابِقِينَ So we take out all the words of Allah subhanahu wa taala revealed to the other prophet. And the words of Allah, those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired to the angels uh, and not those inspired to the angel to send down on the heart of the, of the prophet. Um, the next uh, element into or characteristic into the, uh, the definition قال المكتوب في المصاحف المكتوب في المصاحف The كتابة is action of creation The action of seeing is a creation but what you see is not created The action of hearing is created but what you hearing is not created the action of reciting is created, but what you are reciting is not created. The action of writing is created, but what you writing, that content there, is not created. That's the words of Allah. So the words of Allah are written in the mushaf. And the mushaf is known to be the book written from the Fatiha to Anas and Qala Bayna Daffatay al Mushaf between the cover of the Mushaf. That's the Mushaf uh, on which is applied the Ahkam of the Sharia and the Ahkam of the Fiqh. So I say, do not touch the Mushaf only with wudu uh, to read it and everything. The Ahkam that we have uh, in the Fiqh are related to the book of the Mushaf. So Exclude, you know, uh, from it the electronic books, the books Quran that you have on your phone or your devices. Every book of tafsir, any book that it has, you know, translation, those are not mushaf. 
and we're going to uh, have it, you know, in more in details, insha'Allah ta'ala. قال المكتوب في المصاحف المنقول عنه بالتواتر All of this you have it in the in the uh, what we uh, gave you إن شاء الله طيب المنقول بالتواتر This is we study it in the hadith You know what is the تواتر now right التواتر 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 هو جاء هو ما يرويه جمع يستحيل عادة تواطؤهم على الكذب عن جمع مثلهم في كل مراحل السند من أوله إلى آخره. This is in the hadith, the study of the hadith, that the meaning of the tawatr. Let's see how he's been reading these notes. These notes I didn't see them for a long time, so. Uh, Yeah, they are somewhere. So the Tawatr narrated or transmitted by a generation of a group of people that it will be impossible for them to, to gather to forge a line. Transmitted to the same number of the group of people from the beginning to the time you have it in your hand. What the meaning that is impossible to gather for them to forge a life? That's the definition of Tawatr. Because you have to say, uh, it, at least narrated or transmitted by 100 people. When I say 100 people, it's like I already put confusion and doubt. Because 100 people is restricted. And 100 people are saying, could they, these handled people, make a plot and change things to, you know, transmit it down to the generation the way they change it? You said, yes, it's possible. 200, maybe possible. And you go increase the number to it becomes impossible with your reasoning that these people, they can all together say the same thing. Why? Because they want to make a mistake or to forge a lie into the Quran. So this is how the definition they said is a number that is impossible for them with reasoning to gather together to say a lie. I'll give you an example. There's something happened, big storm, and he did like, you know, something uh, very serious happened. Floods, storms. Someone came talk to you. He said, oh, did you hear? He said, no. Something big happened. You know, all the cities, like, destroyed, for example. Say, so really? So you see it, like, very strange. You hear the news, but you don't believe it fully because it's not, you know, something that is happening. It's very strange what he's telling you. Then you look at the phone, someone called you, say, did you hear what happened? This person is from another city, your relative, and he knows about it. You go, you turn on the TV, and they're talking about it. Then, and then you see other people. So the more you see people from different backgrounds, from different places, telling you the same news, the certainty for you to believe it, that the news is getting bigger and bigger till it becomes something settled. That's it. It happened. This is what happened to the Quran. So, subhanAllah, you go to, to the subcontinent, they are teaching the same. You go down to the West, Islamic West in Andalusia or in North Africa, see, teaching the same. You down in Africa is the same. And everyone, every scholar, every teacher, everything, subhanAllah, all of them, when you see it, you see, it's impossible for these people from all the corner of the world to come up, 
you know, to, to gather to make a lie. It's impossible. It does not, it's impossible. It's illogic. That number that we call Tawatr. Of course, uh, Al-Imam ibn Hajar, as we studied in the book, Nukhbat uh, al-Nadhar and Nuzat al-Nadhar in the Hadith, there's more elaboration on the meaning of the Tawatr. But for this here, to know what the meaning of the Tawatr. So the Quran came through the Tawatr. And the Tawatr, it means becomes Qat'i, Qat'i al-Thubut. Qat'i al-Thubut. Because you have in the text of the Sharia, you have Qat'i al-Thubut wa dhanni al-Thubut. Wa Qat'i al-Dalala wa dhanni al-Dalala. Let's also only talk about Qat'i al-Thubut. Qat'i al-Thubut, which is its soundness as being authentic and coming from the source, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is certain or not? Certain that is coming from the Allah, say Qat'i al-Thubut. Dhanni al-Thubut, Dhanni, we highly presume with a high percentage, 80%, or 75% and above that is from Allah and his four messengers. Quran and the ahadith mutawatira are qat'i thubut. The rest of the texts are dhanni thubut. So the Quran, by the way of the tawatir, is qat'iyu thubut. It is from Allah with no doubt. Well, the last one in the Al Manqul Anhu Bittawaturi is written in Al Mashaf. This is the first paragraph I'm reading and transmitted to us through numerous persons, Tawatur, both verbally and in writing. It is inimitable and unique. Okay? Now, the last characteristic, its recitation is an act of worship. That's characteristic of the Quran. The Prophet said, when you read a letter of the Quran, Allah reward you ten good deeds. And he said, I will not say Alif Lam Mim one harf, alifun harfun, walamun harfun, wa mimun harfun. So the recitation of the Quran is an action of worship. That's why we recite it in the Salah. You don't recite hadith in the Salah. You don't recite hadith Qudsi in the Salah. Uh, I finish with uh, what you have in paragraph two here in the second page. Uh, the different types of wahi. The wahi, what he was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, are three types. The first is Al-Qur'an. Al-Qur'an. The words are from Allah, the meaning from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And its recitation is act of worship. The second, what we call Al-Hadith Al-Qudsi, the sacred hadith. The meaning are from Allah, the wording are from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's the Hadith Qudsi. So what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam narrate on behalf of Allah. He say, Allah said, Allah saying and formulated into the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That we call it Hadith Qudsi. Well, Hadith Sharif, the legacy of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the words of the Prophet and the way he, he said from him, but its inspiration, its meaning is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the Prophet does not speak on his own. All the knowledge he has, he gets it from Allah. That's why one of the uh, uh, very uh, powerful thing being illiterate is negative, right? Someone who does not know, read, and write 
It is, uh, is not something, is not a compliment, except for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Except for the Prophet Sallallahu Being illiterate, it is, subhanAllah, the gift of Allah on his Prophet to not have any previous idea or previous any type of knowledge. Then when he received the wahi, he was pure, completely pure. So he was that full of purity to receive the light of Allah and convey it as is. And that's how al ummiyyatu in the Prophet Wasallam is in itself a miracle. It's beautiful, isn't it? Did you understand it? Tayyip, alhamdulillah. Any question? That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he say, al nabiyul ummiyyu the illiterate prophet, the illiteracy in the prophet is a compliment. Is a compliment. Any question? Uh, I think we'll stop here today. Uh, we don't have enough time to start uh, thinking. This is the first day in the in the new uh, year, mashallah, in the semester. Uh, I will invite you to just check back and review what we have done in Tuhfa al-Iraqiyya and reminding you that we are in the page 51, started the chapter of the love of Allah, Mahabbatullahi, that uh, it is starting from the page 48. Also, uh, those who received the email of the from Brother Ibrahim, there's a translation of this notes, all of it, they's been translated, there's a link. And MashaAllah, uh, our sister who work with us and helping with the, uh, with the, you know, the faculty, Sister Nahla, she did the translation. So in the, uh, we, we share it, Brother Ibrahim, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we have it, you can, inshallah, check the translation of the book. We in the so there's the Tuhfa al iraqiya We have it, MashaAllah, translated. I'm not sure is the full book translated or the part that we studied. From the beginning to the last class. Yeah, to the last class, mashallah. So to the 52. So please review it. And if you have any question, so next time, inshallah, we will have the time to to resume the book next time. Any question? Any question? جزاكم الله خير وبارك الله فيكم ونسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن كما قال لنبيه وقر ربي زدني علما نسأل الله to increase us all in knowledge and piety and give us a firmness on his path إن شاء الله جزاكم الله خيرا وبارك الله فيكم